I'm Jared Polin, and this is Steve Pelosi. And what we're going to do right now is break down an actual insurance policy that we got through my gear vault from one of our insurance partners. So go ahead and enjoy this. There's a lot to learn. So here we are, and what I want to do right now in this video is break down an actual policy that I got through the My Gear Vault app. Now, this so happens to be my policy. Now, this is my professional policy for my business as a photographer and videographer, and I want to let you guys know that the policies that you will be getting will basically be exactly the same as mine. The only differences you will see is how much you pay versus how much I pay because you may have more gear than me or less gear than me or make more than me or make less than me. Now, Steve over here is a licensed insurance professional. He's going to help us run through this policy so we can show you everything that it offers and how it can benefit you. Steve? Jared, so great intro. I appreciate that. And this is this is insurance, right? This is boring. It's confusing. So It's we, also 99 pages. It is exactly 99 pages. So when you get your policy through the My Gear Vault app, you're going to get 99 pages of legal jargon to sift through that... Let's be honest. You're never going to read it. Uh, I, you know, Steve, you're never going to read it. So. Steve, I, I paid for my policy. Right. And luckily, I had you to basically do what we're about to do here, which is break down the top level, right. most important stuff. But I want to remind you guys, it's a 99-page policy. Right. Our goal with my Gear Vault and and sitting here making these videos is to educate you on the most important things so you know what you have uh, and you get the right coverage. Where should we start with my policy and... This, this policy. Yeah, Jared. So let's start. Let's start with the two big. They're called coverage forms. All right. So you'll see, you'll probably see it, or sometimes they're called coverage parts. All right. So the two main parts of this policy, and it is a professional package policy. Say that three times fast. All right. The first piece is going to be general liability. All right. So general liability. What is it? What does it do? This is the slip and fall insurance. Right. Somebody trips over the light stand, the bag. They get hurt. They sue you. You or know, on the or, or on the flip side, somebody scrapes a they knock a TV right. off the wall during a photo shoot. Right, that's most likely going to be covered under that. That policy. would be a general liability too. You do some damage to someone else's property, so it's gonna somebody gets hurt or injured, or you damage someone's property. That's general liability. So that's the first piece of the policy you're going to look at. Yeah, and you're going to see things like you're going to see all kinds of jargon. But what's important is limits. All right, so you'll see a per occurrence limit and an aggregate limit. So per occurrence means for each single time, right? right? And then on an aggregate basis, when you're talking about aggregate is in total, so for the whole policy year. So those are the first two things you're gonna see about general liability, right? all right? So that's, that's the big piece number one. Big piece number two is Inland Marine. So the Inland Marine piece, this, when we're talking about Inland Marine, this is where your equipment's gonna be covered. So as a photographer, videographer, this is probably where the biggest exposure exists for, for you guys. And I say you guys, creatives, photographers, sure. videographers. Uh, when your equipment is, is on the move, it's not just in the studio, but it's on location. It's in transit. It's in a van. It's on a truck. It's in a car. Inland Marine is what's going to protect your gear. It's going to protect your equipment. Now, how does that differ for people out there from, say, homeowners? That people will say, I have a $100 policy at home right. uh, for my homeowners, and it covers all my gear. Right. So homeowners is a personal policy, Jared. So it's important to understand your homeowners is going to be limited to what you're doing as a hobby or on your personal time. This policy that we're breaking down here, those 99 pages of really exciting stuff, uh, that's all for commercial. Right. So that's all for business use. So if you have a homeowner's policy and you so happen to be out of the house doing a photo shoot mm -hmm. and something happens, you're probably not getting covered. It's, it's very likely. But again, you're talking about, yeah, that's homeowners, personal, business stuff, this. Your commercial, right, yep. that, that policy there. So most times, unless you have a specific type of homeowner's policy that specifically items out your expensive gear and has an in-the-marine floater, which yeah. is also possible, but what you're talking about is, is homeowners, most likely. Right. right. And most likely, you know, 99 out of 100 times, not covered. Sure. So, so what yeah. I want to add yeah. to this, because those two things are the most important things that you will hear. Yeah. Now, most of the times, uh, you may find that you will see an advertisement online that says, you can get coverage for, for your photo gear, or not for your photo gear, but for your photography for, for your say, business. $20 yeah. a month. Yep. Now, that sounds great. 
But the problem is that most of those coverages are just for the general liability. And most of the issues that people will have don't center around general liability, slip and fall, somebody trips over your stuff. Most of the insurance stuff that, that goes wrong happens under your inland marine. So you may go out there and get that $20 coverage and then something happens and you realize, oh snap, I actually don't have the right coverage. Great now point. that's the problem with what you find out there. They will try to sell you the inland marine separate. Now what Steve and I have done in putting together this policy by creatives for creatives is we've combined both because we want to put together a policy that is well-rounded that gives you everything that you need so if anything does happen you're most likely going to be covered that's important to remember yeah those are all great points jared and the, the time to understand what's in your policy is not when you have a claim yeah right you know something goes wrong and oh my gosh my stuff is stolen and you find out oh, i don't have an inland marine aspect to my policy. Guess what? You're not covered. Let's talk about the coverages that you get under, uh, that you'll get with your policy for that. Yeah. So, so those two main coverage parts, you know, the general liability and then the inland marine also, they have a bunch of other coverages that are, that are basically subcategories under there and they're all itemized again in those 99 pages that I know you can't wait to read. Um, so they're all basically sub coverages that are all called out with all separate limits in each sure. one. So Steve, why don't you go into breaking down the general liability aspect and, and how much coverage you actually have with this policy? Right, great. So Jared, what you're looking at when you see, again, the 99 pages, you'll see a general aggregate limit and then you'll see uh, each occurrence limit. So for each occurrence, it's a million dollar limit in your policy, all right? So that means for, for one single standalone event, covered for a million bucks. So if you get sued for somebody trips and falls and they sue you for a million bucks, you're, you're covered, covered there. Right, exactly. And then the next limit you're going to see is an aggregate limit. So when we're talking about aggregate, we're talking about the whole thing. So in total, what is your coverage for a whole policy year? Right. So for your policy, that's $3 million, Okay. So three occurrences of me hitting somebody with a monopod and right. getting coverage. Right. So if it's one, in, one instance, right, a million bucks is your cap. You could have basically three $1 million instances in a year. And you're covered. You kind of hope you that's, never have to have that. that yeah. And you never hope it's that high, but at least you have up to $3 million limit, right. which is very important for wedding photographers and anybody that shoots on location. You generally need to have a, uh, a certain amount of insurance that you carry in order to be able to shoot there. Right. So most times a venue is going to ask you for proof of coverage. Right. Right. So you're going to need to show them this. And sometimes they're gonna, they'll have a limit requirement. Yeah. So they're going to want to see you have at least a million, two million, three million. So in your instance, in your policy, you have three million. All right. Is okay. there any deductible in case any of that happens? On the general liability side, no. There is no deductible. So this is first dollar coverage from, from word go. Okay. Okay. So very, very good question. Very important to know. So one million per occurrence. 3 million on an aggregate basis. Right. So make sure that if yeah. you're looking at a policy, if it's not this policy, that it has this type of coverage. Now, if you need more, we can always help you get more. You can always pay for more coverage. This is just the general coverage that you will get with this policy that you get back through the My Gear Vault app. Right. So there's some other, other coverages that are included in general liability. They talk about if you rent uh, a location, like a hall or things like that, there's, there's limits for that. So there's, there's a, a number of sub-coverages within general liability. We don't have to get into all those today. But when you get your proposal and you get your full policy, all these things are listed out there. All right, that sounds good, Steve. Let, let's move into the inland marine part. So when you're talking about inland marine, we identified that that's really where your equipment's going to be covered, Jared. So for creatives, this is probably where some of the biggest exposure exists, right? So your equipment's not always in your studio. It's on the move. It's on a truck. It's in a car. It's on location. So most times your stuff is somewhere else. So the inland marine coverage is what's going to cover your gear no matter where it is. Right. So... Very, very important, and a lot of other policies out there don't include the inland marine, so it's a very important piece to understand. So what, what's the number of coverage? Like, how much am I covered for? Right, so for you, for example, you're covered for your entire, your entire vault of gear, right. so, which we said was how I much? I think it's fifty one dollars or $52,000 in gear right now. Right, so not only is your gear covered, but we also have your computers covered. We also have gear covered to you that you rent. So these are all sublimits within your inland marine coverage part. And that's going to be on everybody's policy that's as everybody's well. Everybody's policy. Let me interrupt Steve though right there because I have fifty one, fifty two thousand dollars worth of gear. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you will have that amount of gear. Mm -hmm. But you know, my policy's more expensive 
because I have that much gear in it. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind that the prices will vary depending on how much gear you have. Right. Every situation is different, right? Everybody's got a different balance of gear. Some people have more computers, more lights, more everything. So everybody's going to be slightly different. So it's important to, to point that out. So being that we started to talk about pricing just a little bit and how my policy is going to be more expensive than a lot of other people's policies, I would say that roughly 90 some percent of the people will see about the same price proposal come in after you take the questionnaire in my gear vault. And what that's based on is if you have, say, $36,000, up to $36,000 worth of gear, or you make $270,000 or less, you're most likely going to see a policy price around $550 a year. Now, to put that into perspective, that breaks out to $1.50 a day to get you full, complete coverage. So you have to make the assessment if you don't have a ton of gear can you afford the $550? Now, if you have a good amount of gear, and we're talking if you have $5,000, four, $5,000 worth of gear, you're going to need to replace that if something happens to it. Right. So, And if you're a working professional, so let's talk about that real quick. If this is professional coverage, what is a professional? If you get paid a dollar, single dollar, to go do something, to do a photo shoot for a friend, to go do a wedding, you are now a professional. So if you had homeowners and you were doing a wedding and your stuff got stolen, you're probably not going to be covered. So that's where this comes into play. Uh, but keep in mind, if you have more gear than that or you make more money, that's where prices start to change. But because we've combined the policy to give you the best of every coverage that we could find, the general liability and the inland marine together, you'll be hard pressed to find a better price with coverage that is comparable or better than what we've been able to put together. Yeah. So we've worked really hard for a long time to make sure that all of the exposures for creatives are contemplated in this policy, right? Yeah. So this was a lot of back and forth with a number of carriers to get the right combination of things. And you touched on a lot of great points, Jared, about you know the unique risks that photographers have. And if you are out there putting yourself out there as a professional, you should have some commercial coverage yeah. because homeowners, homeowners insurance most likely is not going to cover you. Now, again, we have to say your homeowners, your homeowners policy may have an in the Marine floater. It may have something, but by and large, for the most part, you're not covered. Sure. And if you're putting yourself and this, this came up with my gear vault users. We had somebody say, no, I have coverage and it's a hundred dollars a year and yours is very expensive. And he actually sent his policy in for us to look at. Yeah. And he said, guys, you were right. I was wrong. Uh, I don't have any of the type of coverage that you guys are offering. And uh, upon further review, it's actually priced really, really well. Yeah. You know? And, and that's, so. that's the tough thing is that people think they have coverage and they, they don't have the right coverage. And at right. least we caught it before they had an issue. Right. Why don't we go into some examples for Inland Marine? Because sure. this is the most important, one of the most important coverages to have. Sure. So when you're talking about Inland Marine, you're talking about when the gear, when the gear, travels with you, right? When the gear goes outside of the studio or the location. But also are, you are covered in the studio too. You're covered everywhere. So yeah. So let me clarify. That's a really good point. So your gear, your in the Marine coverage covers your gear wherever your gear is. Right. So whether it's in the studio, it's covered. Computers, com hard drives, all of your equipment. So that's a really good point. So it's, it could be, it doesn't have to just be your camera or uh, it's it's everything, right? It's everything that, that we're talking about. Your memory cards, your your light stands, all of your equipment. Yep. Okay. So once that stuff, whether it's in your studio or it goes, let's just say somebody walks off with it. That's where you're talking about inland marine coverage, right? It gets stolen or it gets damaged. Somebody knocks it over and breaks it. That's inland what, marine coverage. What about if they steal it out of your car? Right. So that's a, that's a very good question. So if somebody steals equipment out of a car, the, one of the questions that a claims examiner is going to ask, was the car locked or was there fourth century, right? Because if you left the car unlocked, sh kind of shame on you in a way, right? Well, shame on you also, let me interrupt and talk to the people at home. A good rule of thumb is if you have gear in your car and you get out of your car, take the gear with you. If it's too much gear to take with you through into Chick-fil-A, I love using that example. Mm -hmm. If it's too much gear to take into the Chick-fil-A, then use the drive through Don't get out of your car because it's your gear. If anything happens to it, you're on the hook. So the easiest way to prevent it from being stolen out of your car is to either not leave it in your car 
or to be in your car with your gear. Right. So, Jared, your policy has what's called a locked vehicle warranty that speaks to this type of example very specifically. And this is the same policy for this everybody. This is the same policy that, that everybody would get through, through the My Gear Vault app. So if your gear is stolen out of a car, whether it's your car, another car, any car. An employee's car? An employee's car. doesn't matter. All right. It's in transit. Your gear is in transit somewhere. So obviously it's in a car or some kind of vehicle. If that vehicle is, lo- is locked, right, if there's, a, if there's a sign of forced entry, there is coverage for that. Right. Okay. So there may be instances where there's not forced entry where it might be covered, right? So it's not, it's not black and white. So let's be clear about that. Every claim situation is different. So even if it was unlocked, it really depends on the situation. You could still have coverage. You could still for that. potentially have coverage for that. So being that I said if it's in an employee's car, mm-hmm. like if one of my employees has my camera bag to go do a shoot, mm-hmm. they're an extension of my policy, correct? They're an extension of your policy, they're an extension of your business. So That's if something business happens, gear. right, I fire them. No, I don't fire them. <laughs> uh, it's hap- it's actually happened in the past yeah. to me. Somebody had uh, one of the the business laptops. Mm-hmm. It got stolen out of a locked vehicle, yeah. and it was covered. Right, and luckily we have that coverage in here as well. Correct. So these are important scenarios to to walk through. And again, they all stand on their own. So every sure. situation is, is very very different. So speaking of. Yep. Uh, I think renter gear, rental gear is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, I rent gear from time to time. I get loaner gear from companies. Sure. Is that covered under my policy? Yeah. So you have a section that I'm just scrolling to um, that speaks to miscellaneous gear, right? So your miscellaneous gear in your inland marine coverage part is where your renter's gear is covered. Mm. Okay. So how much? Uh, it depends on what your policy limit is. So for you, that's a, it's a big number. I think it's you know, 52,000. 50, yeah, 50, 52,000. But if, if, if you had, say, $20,000 in gear, you're covered for up to $20,000 exactly. in it's, renters it's gear? It's up to the policy limit. So if, for example, we have a My Gear Vault user who just they rent a lot of gear, they rent more gear than they typically have. So we up their miscellaneous limit. So again, going back to insurance isn't one size fits all, it truly isn't. And everybody has, has different. You know, they have a different way of doing business, right? Sure. So this individual just happens to rent a lot of gear. Right. So we want to make sure that their limits are appropriate. So I want to, I, I know we have, guys, I know that this is a lot of information, but it's important to get it out because I didn't understand most of this stuff when I was starting out and trying to figure this out. And a lot of people came to me looking for this information right. and we're going to share this information with you uh, cut and dry. We're telling you exactly what's in here. I know one of these questions comes up is always this. Something stolen stolen from my car. My bag is stolen right. from a locked car. We'll call it that. And it's been covered. Do I get full replacement value for what I paid for that gear or not? Yeah. So let's talk, let's talk about valuation. That's the question that you're asking me. You're talking about replacement cost versus actual cash value. Right. Okay. So replacement cost would be to replace something brand new. Okay, whereas the actual cash value is the depreciated value. You bought a camera five years ago. It's not worth it's what, not you, paid worth what you paid for it. Okay, so by and large, for the most part, okay, most of, most of what your policy is going to cover is going to be your actual cash value. Right, and there's always a lot of questions about that. The policy that I personally have mm-hmm. is for, which one is that? Actual cash value. Yeah, actual right. cash value, meaning if I had an old D3, Nikon D3, that was a $4,500 camera eight years ago, I would get back its actual cash value now, right. which is probably around, man, probably less than $2,000. Now, that, that's what you will see in these policies. Now, you can get full replacement value. If right. that's something that you want, when you go ahead and get your uh, proposal back, you send an email back and say, I want to see what it's going to cost to get actual replacement value. Uh, keep in mind, I run the math in my head from time to time because I've seen what they both look like. You have to see, does it justify your payment, and I don't know the exact number, going up by, say, a third or a third more than what it would be. Mm-hmm. Now, don't hold me to that. This is just an example. But is it worth spending that much more money a year to get that full replacement value when an occurrence happens? Now, for bodies, they lose value. That's an interesting thing. Maybe lenses, they don't lose a lot of value. So for the most part, a lot of the stuff doesn't depreciate terribly too far, but bodies definitely do. So that's a good point, Jared. So, so when we're talking about these, the customization of these policies, what we did for you versus what's available out there, anybody can have the replacement cost 
option. Sure. Right. So for for your policy specifically, we did actual cash value. Okay. So it's going to factor in depreciation there. So you're going to pay less in premium because to your point, over time, some of these things are going to depreciate. And do you want to pay more for the insurance? You know, it's a higher premium or, you know, so everybody's situation is a little bit different. So understanding what you have, it, you know, that that's really what it boils down to. Yeah. I, I personally chose to keep it this way because I, I don't want to pay the higher premium right now. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessary, but if you do, by all means, yeah, you can it, you can get that proposal it's, as well. It's available, so it's available. It's it's very. There's a lot of uh, pieces of the policy that are very customizable. So let's move down the list of mm-hmm. the policy. Let's move up to the next important thing that we know isn't included in a lot of other policies that right. we read. Right. It's something that's important that is in this policy. Yeah. So I think what you're alluding to is the errors and omissions aspect of the policy. Yes. So errors and omissions is is a you know insurance jargon fancy term for professional liability. So you're a photographer. You're a professional. You're providing services to your clients, whether it be you know videos or or you know, photo, you know photos. If you don't deliver on that, guess what? You're at risk. Right. right. You could get sued. I'm not saying that you you will. You you have. You would. But it's possible. So if you don't have coverage, if you can't deliver on your professional services. That's a problem because then you're talking about they can come after you personally or your business or your assets. So a prime example of this is you're doing a wedding shoot and all of your memory cards fail for whatever reason, for one reason or another, and you are left not able to deliver the product that you were contracted to do. You're probably going to get sued by the bride and the groom for not being able to do your job. There's coverage here. Right. To your earlier point. That's not always the case in a lot of these policies that we've looked at over time. So it's a very important component part of the package policy that we put together for the My Gear Vault users. Now, I wanted to jump back to deductible real quick because mm-hmm. we, we, we missed that real fast with the last section. What is the deductible? Say my bag gets stolen. $10,000 worth of gear right. gets stolen out of that car. Right. So the quick answer is 500 bucks. All right. So and that's it, regardless of really how much stuff you have. So whether you have $5,000 worth of stuff or you have... $50,000 worth of stuff, your deductible, so your out-of-pocket cost is going to be 500 bucks. So just so we're clear, the general liability, which we talked about earlier, no deductible. Inland Marine, deductible. Okay, so your equipment, all those related risks, you're going to have a deductible, 500 bucks. Right, so keep in mind that if something goes missing, a lens goes missing, that's 500 bucks, you're probably not going to claim just it because you have it. to... You just eat it. Yeah, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you're going to pay the 500 bucks anyway. So right. uh, errors and omissions falls under... So uh, it's a subsection under the Inland Marine coverage part, okay? So you're going to see a whole litany of, of coverages and a whole bunch of things that you wouldn't even think, well, why do I even need that? Right. But errors and omissions is probably the most important thing that we've seen as we've examined policies over time that's missing. Because if that happens, God forbid, and you said memory cards, well, it could be a hard drive. It could right. be any, any equipment that fails and you can't deliver on whatever your, your, prof- your professional services, those obligations. You're at risk. So the the one question that came in from one of the readers had to do with a hard drive failing. Right. And he wanted to know if there was coverage for that. And you say data recovery is part of errors and omissions? Well, it's not part of errors and omissions. It falls under Inland Marine. Ah. Okay. So it's part of the Inland Marine. So it's a good question. And again, a lot of this stuff is probably so boring and confusing, but it's important. Yeah. Because this, this happened. This is one of, one of our users said, look, this happened to me. I had a memory card fail. I had to take it to a professional to... And it costs thousands of dollars for them to extract the data from a memory card, a hard drive, and all these things so they could get their photos so they don't get what? So they don't get sued. Right. You know? So, yes, there's coverage for that, for that recovery of data or media. Got and it. And that's part of the Inland Marine coverage part. So it's a very good question. Probably super confusing. And I know, you know, we're probably putting everybody to sleep by now, but that's okay. No, <laughs> it's just important to know yeah. this stuff. At least watch it once. Right. Yeah, what, what's next that's also included in this policy? Right. So there's so many things that are included and important. I'll rattle off a list for you. Um, and then we can, we can go one by one. We talked about the errors and omissions. Uh, the locked vehicle warranty we talked about a bit. Uh, worldwide inland marine coverage. Say that three times fast. So in other words, you have coverage anywhere you are in the world. So if I travel... And I remember in the questionnaire, it mm-hmm. says, do you travel, right. how many days out of the year are you going to, or how many weeks? Mm-hmm. And it's, what was it, six months? Yeah. So basically less than six months, uh, you, you're, you're going to be covered. So if you're, if you're out of the country for more than six months, that means you're probably taking up residency somewhere. So you're probably going to get local coverage there. Right. But it's, it's good to know that because I travel, that the coverage comes with me. So my gear is right. protected where I go. And a lot of other policies that we examine don't have this. 
right? So this is another thing. So that's the uh, Worldwide Inland Marine. Business travel accident benefit, donation assurance, emergency real estate consulting, identity theft expense. I mean, who would think you know, identity theft ha happens? It's actually, it's actually a pretty big, pretty big issue. But who would think that in your commercial insurance policy, you'd have some protection for identity theft expense? Yeah. So if, you're, if your identity gets stolen, that's going to cost you a lot of money to... Sometimes you have to hire attorneys and go through a whole whole process. You have fifty thousand dollars of coverage. You have fifty thousand. You have fifty thousand dollars of coverage. I hope I don't need I it. I hope you never have to use any. But it's of this. nice that it's, it's there. nice. It's nice that it's is there. Is that a deductible one? Yes, or? it is. So it cost you five hundred bucks. Would you pay five hundred bucks to get fifty grand? Yes, I think you would. It's okay. a good trade. Yeah, it's a, that's a that's a fair trade off. So image restoration, key individual replacement expenses, kidnap expense, terrorism travel reimbursement, workplace violence. Conference cancellation, fundraising event blackout. Oh my gosh! What is? I don't even know what that uh, is. Yeah, we can get into that. I don't even go into that. Political one. unrest. I mean, there, we don't want to get into maybe political there's, unrest. Maybe there's some in the U.S. right now. That's Kid, a different kidnapping. That's a different story. All of this is in there. Temporary meeting space expense, travel delay reimbursement. Your flight gets delayed or canceled. You have. Fifteen hundred bucks of coverage. Is I mean, that who thinks deductible though? Yes, there's a deductible. That one I don't so, know about. Yeah. Am I going to spend five hundred bucks for that one? Yeah. I don't know that I'm going to file a claim for yeah, that. Yeah, you might not personally. But again, and this so, is my policy. I'm right, talking. This about. is your yeah. But and at least at least it's there. It's there. It's there. So there's all these things, Jared. That who would think of these things? We've thought of them because as obscure as they may be, they've happened to somebody along the way. Yeah. And it's all included in your policy. All included. It's it's definitely nice to have. And, and I know another question that comes in, uh, that came in was, if I add something new to my gear vault, mm -hmm. am I covered for that it, it, right away? And the answer to that is yes, as long as you're within the limits that you have for your policy. So right. as long as you don't go over, say you have $20,000 worth of gear and you're covered for $20,000 worth of gear and you add a $2,000 body, well, now it's your you got twenty two thousand dollars. So right. at that point, we'll notify you and say, "Hey, would you like to expand to to the extra coverage to do that?" Right, right. So that's a very good point. So when you're adding, just in, if it's like a body, it's a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar thing. That's easy, right? But if you're all of a sudden your your vault value doubles, you might want to give us a call. Sure, you know, you might want to give us a call and say, "Look, you know, this is now you have a different situation." When, and what I'll say to that is that when because. <laughs> We both took a lot of other proposals online and they ask you to list every piece of gear that you have. And mm -hmm. every year they ask for an audit. They ask you to send in mm -hmm. the information and, and keep it up to date. I know that for the policy that I switched off of, mm -hmm. I haven't done that in like six years. Right, right. And I was probably paying for stuff that I should, or I was probably covered for things that I didn't own anymore, right. which isn't good. Um, but what's great about my gear vault is the ability to export that CSV file so that you could send that into the insurance company so Every they year. know that it's there. Right. Now, that's definitely something that's important. Yeah, and that's a very nice feature to have because at the end of the policy year, all you have to do is send that to the insurance company instead yeah. of just in, in your example where how many years was it that you hadn't done that? Probably six. Right, six or seven, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Right. That's a so, long amount of time. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the point of the app right. is to help you input, organize, and protect your gear. Right. So remember when we looked at everything, how much gear that you really didn't know that you had. Oh, I, was that, under, I was actually underinsured when right. I got my gear vault, right. and I looked, and I was like, oh, I'm underinsured by at least $20,000. Right. I think I was paying for $30,000 in coverage and had 50 some thousand dollars worth of gear, right. which isn't um, a good place to be. No. But no, now I'm really in a not. good place because this is, this is the policy that I have. Right. And at the end of the year, all we have to do is send that CSV file to update. Right. Nice. And, that, and that's it. And we'll have those constant updates all along the way. So I know we didn't go through all 99 pages because I don't think anybody wants to go through 99 pages. But Steve and I went through here and picked out what the important coverages are to be aware of and to let you know what you will see when you get this proposal back or if you already have this proposal. It's... It's a lot of information, but I mean, I feel much more educated now that we go through this step by step to understand what's here. And as always, if you have questions, you can leave them as comments or you can send them into support at mygearvault.com. So Steve, what else do you have? Well, what I would add to that, Jared, is if anybody has any specific questions, and I get them all the time, right? And even being in the insurance field for over 16 years, I still get stumped. So as confusing as this is, get your questions into us because from time to time, I'll even pick up the phone and call the carrier and say, 
That's a really good question. And if it's not contemplated in this policy already, we're going to work to get it added. Yeah, because I mean that's what we have the ability to do, and that's that's the other point of my gear vault. The more people that use it, the more pull we have to make the policy better for everybody, for the entire community. That's a that's a super good point. Yeah, right there. So what what I want to say is, if you don't have a proposal or you don't have insurance just yet, use the My Gear Vault app. Go under the insurance tab and take the questionnaire. It should take you roughly three-ish minutes to go through it. And once you go through it, you're going to get a price indication at the very end of it. And then on our end, we're going to work on getting the actual proposal put together and then sent back to you that you can then get insurance coverage by just saying, yes, cover me. So if you don't have coverage just yet, you don't have insurance, but you you want to get uh, an official quote. Mm-hmm. Go into the My Gear Vault app, hit the insurance button. There's a short questionnaire there. It should take you roughly three minutes to go through. And at the very end of it, hit the blue button. And then what happens next, Steve? So once once the user hits the blue button, that that proposal comes directly to my team. So we review that information, then we send it out to the carrier. Once the carrier gets it and reviews it, that's where the proposal is generated and this we push thing. it. That thing, right? That the thing, thing we've been talking about thing, the whole time. Right, so that thing comes back and I know it's a lot of information, but we're pushing that back right to the customer. That comes from me and my team right to the user. Right, so yeah. once you get that back, right. this is it's an official proposal that right. you can get your coverage bound by just saying, Yes. 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 I would like this. So you'll have all the official pricing there. You will see everything. It's it's very. I almost said cut and dry. Yeah. It's it's easy to get coverage. Right. The proposal that we just went over is a lot of information, yeah. but know that we worked very hard to put this together to get insurance coverage for creatives by creatives. It's the same exact insurance that I personally use because people ask that. How do we know that this coverage is what you recommend? Well, it's simple. It's because I use this coverage. I I can't say it any clearer than that. The coverage that you are getting a proposal for is the same coverage that I pay for and have to protect my gear. So when you get that proposal, all you simply have to do is respond to that very same email and say, please bind coverage or cover me or yes, I want it. That's all we need, Jared. And then the proposal turns into a policy. Right. And then you'll get back, uh, you'll either get a bill in the mail or you could pay it or on the website or by phone. Mm-hmm. We have a whole bunch of FAQ videos under the video tab on my Gear Vault inside the app. There's so much information out there that we've created. I mean, that's the point of doing this. I know they're long videos and we're going to wrap this up. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of information inside of these 99 pages. There's not a lot of clear information out there on the internet, and that's why we're taking it upon ourselves because we are not an insurance company. We are here to educate you and help you get the right coverage through our partners. That's what it's all about because the more people that are protected, the happier you're going to be because the peace of mind that you have when you have when you wake up in the morning and go, well, if all of my gear was stolen last night, I had coverage, that's... that's that's a nice place to be. Yeah, and I think what, what's great is the, the educational aspect of this and the, just to streamline this insurance process, you know, and just to put a ribbon around it. All of those questionnaires we filled out that were 20 pages long and took us 10, 15, 20 minutes to do, you're not going to experience that with this. So yeah. we're trying to make this process painless, efficient, easy to understand, and, you know, what I would say is tell us, tell us how to get better. You know, everybody yeah. tell us how to get better. So as always, if you would like to ask any questions, you can leave them in the comments or you can send them, as I said earlier, to support at mygearvault.com. If you haven't downloaded My Gear Vault just yet, go ahead and download it at mygearvault.com or in the Apple App Store. It will be out in Android at some point as well. Uh, If you're watching this and it's available on Android, cool. Go Mm -hmm. download it. For My Gear Vault, this is Steve Belosi. I'm Jared Pollan. We'll see you. 